Uh, board unanimously voted to accept the district manager's goals and objectives running from December 2019 through November of 2020. They'll be posted uh, on the new website uh, shortly. And that's it for the actions in closed session. Do we do the roll call, Holly? Director Ferris? Here. Director Pulse? Here. President Swan? Here. Director Henry? Here. Director Moran? Present. Are, are there any additions or deletions to the open session? Yes, Chair Swan, I would request that we remove uh, item unfinished business 10A, Fall Creek Fish Ladder construction. Um, the removal will not um, slow the project down at all. Um, we need to add some additional information to the staff report that is not available tonight. Okay, it is removed. Uh, time for oral communications. Um, does anybody have any comments they'd like to make regarding items not on the open agenda? Yes. If I may, I wanted to talk about the budget, and I know it's part of the finance report, but there is not an agenda item itself. May I speak about it? Is this appropriate? It is an agenda. There is an agenda item. There is. It's B, item B. Will there be a PowerPoint? Budget process. Budget process for fiscal year. It's a PowerPoint. And the mm -hmm. PowerPoint presentation? Oh, it wasn't on. I, I it's not in. It's it. not in the agenda. No, there's nothing in there. But it is a PowerPoint. Eleven B. It's on the agenda. It's part of the finance report. No. no. It's it, item eleven B. Yeah. I'm not sure if I can stay that late. May I go ahead and speak about it? I go. Please go right ahead. I I think that it was yours is on the process, and I'm not speaking about the process of the agenda. Okay. So I've written it out because I have a little bit of hay fever and I need it to here. This upcoming budget is coming at a critical time. From what I understand, it will have to be very tight and focused as the needed progress and for needed progress ahead. As a customer, I want the district to consider both how to keep water rates affordable while at the same time being well prepared for major tasks and uncertainties that are coming, such as recession, natural disasters, man-made disasters like CalPERS and other unfunded liabilities, a backlog of system upgrades and maintenance, increased state regulations including Santa Margarita and some new requirements on PFAs and water quality that are coming up, and of course climate change. So the key components of a healthy budget will focus not just on safety and sustainability, but on long-term strategies and most importantly, building resilience. I recently read there's a 70% chance of a recession starting within the next six months. If you've been watching the news, businesses and government agencies are already preparing by implementing ways to both reduce overhead and increase efficiency. The district is going to have to carefully watch spending and focus on protecting our water supply <coughs> through having a robust system. This means getting really serious about minimizing leaks and maximizing the ability to move water around the system. The district has to do better than past boards. There are lessons learned, such as with the Lone Pico projects. There is no room for politicking. Delaying work due to political posturing costs this district hundreds of thousands of dollars more than necessary. Past boards losing their focus from the primary mission of this district and diverting funds to side programs is not just money lost, to enhance sustainability and resilience, but time and money lost tenfold forever. You've inherited many of these conditions and will be thrown even more challenges, but I think we have a board with practical experience, capable of making sound business decisions and not getting distracted by engaging in conflicts or popularity contests. I think most of this board understands it is critical to refocus on water and infrastructure and move towards sustainability and resilience. And I think most of the board and staff realize that going back to us ratepayers with more increases so soon after recent hefty hikes is not a good option. Stanford recently released a study on climate change 
that said we have all the data and we have all the money we need. We just don't have the will to do what's necessary to save the planet. On a smaller scale, I ask that you embrace this message here and have the will to do what is needed in this budget. Please show us your commitment to customers and affordable rates and to a healthy system for sustainability and most importantly, resilience. Thank you. Thank you. So CalPERS is a man-made uh, disaster? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. It sure is. <laughs> Will, willful, too. Yeah. Uh, any other? Uh, yeah. I, I just wanted to uh, thank the Environmental Committee for really hard, good work today on the fire management planning. I don't know whether you're going to hear about that today, but I'm really happy with the progress on that. All right. Thank you for your comments. Yeah, the input. Larry's been a big uh, part of uh, helping get information, and uh, it's been a big input into the, that committee's work. Yeah, his, his assistance has been invaluable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any other comments from anybody? Uh, okay. Moving on to new business. Uh, Yes, uh, uh, item 11A is the annual review of the LADOC uh, annual report. Um, it's recommended to the board of directors review this uh, the memo regarding the LADOC Assessment District Oversight Committee, um, known as LADOC, and report. And the recommendation is to receive and accept the annual report from the LADOC committee chair, post the report on the LADOC page of the district website hold questions and answer discussion, consider a joint meeting with the LADOC uh, and the board, LADOC uh, committee and the board for the purpose of uh, further discussion of the annual report. Uh, the district established uh, the, the LADOC Lompico uh, Assessment District Oversight Committee in accordance with the LAPCO Resolution 953A. The purpose of the committee is to review and oversee income and expenses related uh, two construction projects in the Engineering Report Assessment District, AD-16, and to serve as liaison for customers uh, residing within the Assessment District boundaries of the former, former Lompico County Water District, and to inform the board and public at least annually concerning the revenue and expenditures of the Assessment District proceeds and on projects approved by the voters of the, within the LADOC AD-16, and issue a written report. Um, one of the duties of the committee uh, is to prepare and present to the board an annual written report that includes a statement indicating whether the proposed assessment district expenditures are in compliance with the requirements as set forth in the assessment district, a statement indicating whether the prior fiscal, fiscal year assessment district expenditures have been reviewed by the committee and are, in, are in require, in, within the requirements and set forth of the assessment district. Uh, any other information the committee deemed is useful in furthering understanding of the assessment district revenues and expensive projects, uh, funding, history, and purpose, and the annual report should be based on a, on a district fiscal year. Uh, the committee worked long and hard in preparing this report. Extensive research and long hours are demonstrated with the thoroughness of this report, and the committee should be commended for their hard work. Here tonight, we have the LADOC Chair, Tony Norton, here to present uh, this board with their annual report. So with that, I'd like to introduce Tony Norton, Chair of the LADOC Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Um, and I don't have a long presentation. I, I know it is a long, long report. <laughs> and um, I have to say that, um, as you know, this is the very first annual report that, our, that the LADOC Committee has has produced. It's from June 1st, 2016 through the June 30th of 2019. And we have, um, we, we all would like to thank this board for giving us the opportunity to, um, to produce this report, the, um, this first annual report, and to, for giving us access to the information that we needed to, um, I'm sorry, <coughs> To, to be able to produce the report. So thank you very much. We appreciate that. Um, we, we, I'd also like to say that um, we could not have done it without the assistance 
Holly and, and Rick and Stephanie. I, uh, and we really, really appreciate the quarterly meetings that we have. And it, we, it was this gentleman here that negotiated our first <coughs> meetings with Stephanie. We, um, until, until that time, we had no information. So just shortly before that, the last um, the vote that brought the new, um, new board in, um, we, we did start the quarterly meeting, so we had access, and then, but it wasn't until this group came that we were able to produce the annual report, so thank you. And also, we did have, we started with five people and on, the, um, on our first committee, and then, um, and people quit, and now we're down to four people, and it's only three of us that really get together each week. The one gentleman um, that, that just started with a group, he's, he's been away for so long. So we three, three people, worked hard to produce this report, and we weren't always in agreement. And so you can imagine how difficult it is to compromise with three people. <laughs> but we were able to do it, and that's what, I think that's why it's long. And like, he, like Rick said, though, it does have a lot of important information. And what we're asking is that you approve this report and then, and, and then post it to the LADOC page. But we also have a, a um, you have it in your agenda packet, a one-page mailer that we'd like to have sent out. And um, Stephanie, if you could put that one page up that I asked for, it was um, page I don't know why it's not one to show, oh, just one, a PDF. Okay. It's only well, like wanting to show an actual <coughs> PowerPoint. Is it the letter from the law chair? Or? No, it's, it's the right there. Right? Well, it's actually this page right here. It's the oh, fourth okay. one. This will be on one side this of the right Meller. Here. And this is a, um, a balance sheet that shows all the revenues. So this is based on information provided by Stephanie on um, all the revenues that have come in thus far and then the revenues that came out as of June 30th, as of, um, June 30th um, 2019, which is the end of the fiscal year. So that'll be on one side, which is information, you, you know, that's what they really want to see, according to my husband. <laughs> and, and, but I think he's right about that. And then on the other side will just be the address, and then a real short note from the um, LADOC um, committee at showing, telling people what, where they can go to find the entire annual report. So that's what we're asking, that you, can, that you send that out. And a copy of it is the, um, right after the annual report, you'll see the sheet that I'm requesting. Mm -hmm. And so we ask that you um, mail that out, that one page, to everybody in Lompico because they just, um, I think this is important for them to know, and we, we never, um, we rarely get anybody attending our meetings. So um, while um, I see that Rick, um, I mean Rick mentioned something about a question and answer meeting, I don't know if anybody would ever show up actually. So I wonder if that would be time well spent. What do you think, Deb? Um, I, I, my thoughts are that why don't we send this out and publish it and then if, you, if we get questions coming in, and, and people seem to you know, have concerns about it, then we schedule a meeting so that we can address everybody's questions. So those are, that's my thought. And um, I think that that's about it. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, and the pictures came from, um, from week three. We, we did post something on next door asking people to submit pictures. We never heard from anybody. So um, those were all of our that's your banana slip? Uh, but, but, moi. <laughs> <laughs> but mine was the, that landslide with one of, a, one of my friends standing in front of it. So that was one of mine. That's my favorite. I want to say thank you. Um, I know it's been a long, hard job for the three of you. You stuck with it. Um, Debbie uh, stuck with it in spite of how she was treated um, before she got on, on the committee. Um, I appreciate that. 
and it's a lot of work. Thank That's you. a lot of work. And a lot of material that Deb, Deb provided yeah. with lots of research. So, thank you very much. So I too would like to thank uh, the both of you here uh, for such a thorough report. I learned more about Lompico than I've ever known before. It was a nice little history lesson. Uh, and the pictures were a nice video as well. Uh, so very thorough. Um, also, we just approved Rick Rogers' goals and objectives for his uh, next year. And included in that is uh, getting the uh, training that the grand jury recommended. So that's a priority for Rick, and it is for all of us as well, so that uh, the Ron Pico committee have what it needs. Yeah. And uh, just doing that, it shows the commitment to transparency that I think is at the root of all this. And thank you for doing that. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to say something too. So I've, I've been on the committee just over a year. Tony has done all the back-breaking work of keeping the, the committee going. So I was criticized for spending too much time on the historical background of Lompico Water and the milestones leading up to the merger. But having a front row seat to many of these events, in my view, it's really important because someone else is always ready to change the story from that wacky, negative, po politically motivated version contracted by this district just a few years ago to just as late as a few weeks ago hearing yet another revision of events. So yeah, it's important. The LADOC first annual report tells only a little slice of the story and for all its length doesn't begin to recognize all those who participated in the merger and got us to where we are. No one person, board, or committee could have done this alone. It took an interest and involvement by the whole Lompico community to sort through the pros and cons. So in addition to all the people that are thanked in the report, and as Tony has pointed out, thanking, including the president, SLV board and staff, a big thank you to everybody in Lompico. You are the heroes of this merger decision, and this report is for you. So as we've seen in SLV, some issues can polarize a community and stall being able to find solutions. Ed and I saw that when we served on the Lompico Citizen Advisory Committee, which had the task of gathering questions and seeking answers as objectively as possible, kind of like what we were trying to do in this report. We felt that all people deserve to have the full information they need to make an informed decision, and it took time to process and adjust to all the potential changes we were facing. So the philosopher Lao Tzu said, if you do not change direction, you may end up where you are heading. Just as an SLV water, someone has to set their sights a bit further, take a longer vision, get past the day-to-day -day and the politics, set values and goals, create better ideas, and then work to support them. The merger and assessment district agreements were a result of that, well-intentioned and entered in good faith and trust. Politics and short-sightedness unfortunately gummed up the works originally. The grand jury did a thorough job of analyzing what went wrong and how to fix it. Our report includes that analysis and uses the framework of the grand jury recommendations to present the information. The people in Lompico paying a 10-year assessment on their property tax are entitled to all the facts. We have assembled a whole list of frequently asked questions in the report from public and committee members, with answers provided by the district, but not yet by a neutral outside expert in assessment districts as recommended by the grand jury, and we're working on that. After a slow start, we are very happy to see the present momentum and look forward to the next report having a lot more to say about completion of projects in Bonfico. I'm honored to serve this district and to have served with Tony, Marianne, and Norm in honoring our responsibilities as an oversight committee. And I thank you for approving the report. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just had uh, wanted to echo what other folks have said, but this is really outstanding work, and I think it is indicative of what can be done by the community when um, it's given uh, the flexibility to decide what is going to work for that part of the community rather than have something imposed on it by um, uh, other folks. Um, to me, this is the epitome of what we're trying to achieve 
as a locally managed, governed board, and in this case, assessment district. Um, the, I know this covers only through June 30th, mm -hmm. but on the next page in the agenda um, was a very stark contrast of what I think one of the things that we'll probably need to focus on going forward, and that is really understanding what the costs are going to be coming in at. Uh, for the uh, Long Pico folks. Not that we're going to increase uh, the assessment dis uh, assessments at all, but I think in the interest of transparency, we also need to understand what the impact of that delay was in terms of the actual cost we're going to be paying for the projects that we're going to be doing. And so I'm hopeful that next year we can get a, kind of here's what the estimate was, here's where we are uh, with um, those costs and really be able to let the community know that. I think it's a lesson that, as a district, I'm hopeful we can learn, which is when you get money in, go as quickly as possible to spend it. Exactly. And when you have an assessment district, spend up front, don't wait to the end. If we had waited until the end of this assessment district, 10 years, to start spending money, it wouldn't have covered a single project at the, mm -hmm. at the rates we're going now. Um, I think it's you got to put your you got to put your foot down on the pedal and drive as hard as you can once you have that assured set of funds. And um, I think that's something that uh, is going to become really clear here as we uh, go through uh, that comparison. Well, and isn't that happening in this meeting, actually? It is. Okay. We are going to put our foot down and go like crazy. Okay. Don't get nervous. <laughs> yeah. Though, though I... I would have liked for it to have been done in like July of 2017 or something we, like that. We feel the so same way, Bob. We're, we're, we're catching up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would also want to extend thanks and appreciation to the committee's efforts for doing such a great job. And <coughs> I do recognize how much effort is required by everybody to put together reports like this, the meetings, the analysis, and it's, uh, it's great that the, the staff was able to participate to the extent they were, and help making the, uh, the report as comprehensive and complete as possible. So thanks to them as well. It's great. Uh, we want to get a uh, motion on the table here about accepting this. Anybody? Why don't you do it? Oh, you're the, you're the okay. one. Yeah. A, I'll make a motion, motion that we accept the LADOC, um What do we want to call right here? Okay. Receive and accept the annual report from WADA committee. Um, is that all I need? I think that's fine. Anything make a decision on the mailing? Hmm? I think staff can, I think we've made a decision that we will go ahead with the mailer. It's, it's a small amount of funds and it's only to the one people. Yeah. And, and we figured that would be part of this. So, okay. That's fine. so do I need to say that it's the mailer? Oh. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Receive and accept the annual report from the LADOC committee and uh, send out a one page, double sided letter to everyone in Long Pico. Well, so yeah. customers. customers. That are customers. <laughs> Everybody's customers. Well, I, I mean, the people way back there are not. I'll second that. Thank you. Molly, would you like to take the vote? Do we want to go to the. Oh, who would we go to the public? Do we go to the public before we go? Do we? No. Public, public comment? No? <coughs> okay. Colleague, please call me. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Pulse? Yes. President Swan? Yes. Director Henry? Aye. Director Moran? Yes. Okay, okay moving on. Rick? Okay, I do believe uh, our finance manager has a budget presentation. To uh, give more. Over to you, Stephanie. 
So this is just kind of a high level view of the overall budget process, um, kind of down the road, how we envisioning everything working where we are now, some of the different types of methods that we use, and just a high level of some of the different assumptions that we have. Uh, so in general, this is for the most part across most government agencies, a strategic plan is kind of the guiding document of the district. It helps outline your mission, vision, goals, and objectives. That helps lead into five-year planning for capital planning, financial planning. Um, you know, the financial plan that helps to lead you into the rate study. The capital ties into that, how you're going to finance the different things. Um, and as most public agencies have unfunded liabilities. Uh, that guides you into the budget process for each year or biannually. That's where you're going to be strategizing the goals and object objectives, establish the performance indicators, estimate costs and revenues, um, tying back into the overall strategic plan. And then as an ongoing basis, you're going to be monitoring, reviewing all of your actuals to budgets, any of the different milestones that you've set up along the way. Uh, and from time to time, budgets do need to be amended. So again, you know, high level budget formulation, that's where internally staff is working on crafting everything and getting everything figured out. Budget review process, that's where we're really starting to get the board and the community in the know, um, being able to review some of it, identify any of the key anomalies or spe you know, specifics that are happening in that year. Um, then you can review and amend until you get the final budget. And then budget ex execution, you're going to be implementing it, reviewing it um, as you go, and you know, continued monthly, quarterly, and then year-end review, and then all of this kind of flows into the, the annual audit. Here's you know, six of the different phases. Again, a lot of this beginning steps that we've been in right now is all more of an internal document that, that we're working on. We're getting close to coming up to having some stuff that we'll be presenting to the budget and finance and the full board kind of as we formalize more of the different uh, milestones and the budget components. There's four main budget methods that are typically used in these processes. Uh, incremental, so that's going to be Anything that has, you know, kind of a more fixed percentage across the board, a good example of that would be health expenditures. Our budget is July to June. The health changes for the next fiscal year aren't going to be coming out until later in the year. They usually run on a calendar year. So we have to make some assumptions for how much we think health insurance is going to increase or decrease. Zero base, bottoms up budget. Um, so essentially that's your building stuff up from the ground up. A good example of that is uh, the environmental department tends to have a lot of specific studies or projects that may be going on depending on what year you're in. So you're able to kind of build your contract professional services from start the beginning all the, all the way up. Where the opposite is you'll have sometimes um, Stuff like in James's department for operating expenses of the district to where there's a run rate of how much you know inventory or different types of stuff like that is typically being used throughout the year. Activity based is top-down approach where management uses past experience and current goals. So that's maybe a little bit more like I was just talking about where you know operating expenditures of the district we have history to look at, we're able to identify if there are any anomalies in the prior year to get kind of what the general run rate is. Value proposition, um, this is going to be for anything that has more of an intrinsic value. Private sector has this a little bit, I, I feel like you see this more in, in the public industry to where you may be spending money on something that you're not you know, necessarily getting an actual return on your investment but there's some sort of value that you determine um, that it's giving to your customers or staff or other stakeholders, which is why you're choosing to budget for that expenditure. 
um, which method do we use? We use all of them. So I mean, the majority is going to be the incremental and zero-based budgets. Um, we do use the, you know, the activity-based, the value proposition um, for some of those. But for the most part, you're going to see incremental and zero-based in what in what we're working on. Um, they each have some of the different examples, you know, labor related, like we talked about, health insurance, zero base, you know, build, building everything up. My department's similar, you know, I know how much our software licenses are for the year, so I'm able to very clearly identify from the ground up what the expenditures are going to be. Uh, activity based, I mean, this year is a perfect example. We will be budgeting for the power shutoff events, so that's something that is occurring that you know we're going to be able to specifically identify and um, budget for. Value proposition, um, an example would be the leak adjustment policy. I mean, the fact that the district offers a leak adjustment policy is was deemed as a value to the customers as a way to give a break on some, you know, when they have an exceptional bill. Um, the flip side of that is it's less revenue than what the district would have otherwise been receiving. So where we are now for what are we missing? A current strategic plan, I mean, that's <laughs> coming up in the in the works here pretty soon. Why it's important? Uh, it's the guiding document of the district. It sets the vision and measurable goals and objectives. The other thing that we have in the works that's a major player is a capital master plan. Um, you know, that's going to really be needed to help with some of the long-term financial and capital improvement planning that we're going to have coming up. So we are going to have these two documents in time for this budget process, um, which is okay. We can still do a budget. Um, ideally, where do we want to be? We want to have a current strategic plan that's you know going to get us to the point of us being able to have these five-year capital and financial plans that's going to help form the goals and objectives of the district. It's going to guide the annual budget process. Um, eventually, I think it'd be great if we can get into a biennial budget process. And all of these are kind of the steps that we need if we do want to go and get the Distinguished Budgeting Award um, like we have for our annual financial statements. Here's some of the fundamentals that we have known and are working with for our 2021 budget. Um, these summer months we're tracking low. So this current year's budget, we were budgeted at 660,000 units of consumption. Uh, we're proposing 650,000 units based on the fact that the summer months were running lower than, than expected. Uh, overall expenses, no headcount changes, um, no major changes for projecting the regular expenditures that we have. We are going to be factoring in three three-day PG&E power shutoff events. It's hard. I mean, it's one of those things where it's not known exactly how many are going to happen. Um, it could very well be more. We may decide based off of discussions um, to increase that, that amount. Um, and then we're going to be working on presenting an unfunded employee benefit liability reduction plan as part of this budget as well. Capital, the main projects that will be in construction are going to be the Long Pico tanks and the pipeline projects. And then there's going to be, you know, the planning phase for future projects, and then the district has deferred maintenance projects that, you know, such as tank footings that we're always constantly doing, you know, we do a couple more in each budget. Um, unfunded liabilities, so these would be the three categories that we for the most part have, is the CalPERS pension liability, as of the last audit, it was $3.8 um, the district in the past has done fresh starts to amortize over shorter periods. You are allowed to do pay downs during the year, coordinating with your actuarial to be able to, to chip away at that. OPEB liability, uh, so it stands for other uh, post employment benefits, is at 1.1 million for the last audit. The district did create the the trust to be able to start funding. So that kind of is step one um, in that aspect. And then things to think about, implied subsidy, how to get reimbursed. And then you have deferred maintenance. So the full scope uh, is still to be determined, but in general, 
is chipped away at as we go. The example I used before to for these. Um, so this is what the budget and finance. This is the slide that the budget and finance committee um, had. We chose to include it in the full board, but this is going to be one of the things that is the heavy topic that budget and finance are going to be talking about at some of the upcoming meetings. Proposed timeline. So January to February. You know, it's the internal. District um, managers have gotten me back their first round of operating expense budgets. Um, March to April is when we're sitting here pulling all of these together. We start to then work on the non-operating, the capital projects, um, external. So at the 3-3 budget and finance meeting, we'll be going over the operating revenue and operating expenditures, and then we'll also be presenting that those results to the board of directors on 319. Um, and then come the, well, it would have been the April meeting, I'm proposing moving it to 331. Uh, we'll be looking at all the, the major components then. So we'll be looking at the capital, the non-operating, and that's when we're really gonna start to have the first high level view of how everything is rolling up. Uh, we will then have more discussion at the 416 <laughs> budget meeting. Um, whether the board decides to do like a workshop in between, you know, kind of it's going to depend on how heavy of a load that budget meeting has. Um, and then again in May, you know, that's where we're still going to continue to be working on this with the board and the public and the budget and finance committee. Um, and then it's possible that we could have, uh, if it's ready, to have the full board review it for possible approval on 521. If not, you know, we have two meetings in the month of June to be able to get through that type of stuff. So essentially we just wanted to loop the board, full board in on kind of just the high level timeline, some of the different things that are going into it right now. So that is all. Thank you. specific guidance from the board at this point or um, the budget or are you going to wait for the budget committee meeting to start um, I mean like I said we're kind of at that you know the district internally you know we don't have any major initiatives or major changes to the budget that we're envisioning in, the, in this process um, for this year's um, you know, we are, you know, like I talked about, there are a couple things that we are looking to integrate in, such as the PSPS events, um, a, a refunding plan or a reduction plan for some of our unfunded liabilities. If there's anything that board members have that they really want to discuss to integrate into, um, we could you know, toss some of those ideas around so that way staff has time to start to build some of those in. Um, or we can, you know, budget and finance this meeting soon and, you know, we could always discuss yeah. that more at the, at the next board meeting. A couple other questions. Um, do you believe that our reserve funds are funded enough at this point? That is, that they weren't on the unfunded liabilities, I, I can't remember if they're both funded capital and operating. Correct, sorry. So when I was doing the unfunded life, yes, I mean, I did not show, and that'll be part of the budget process also, is okay. what we set the, what yep. the district's current reserve funds are set at, and then we'll be able to show what funding levels they have. So yes, that would be an additional unfunded liability I can add to the listing that we discussed for what we still have to fund there. There's two other areas that I'm Personally concerned about, and one is uh, where we are in meters. So I know we have a life of the meters, but I don't have a real good handle on what our histogram is on age of meters. And I was wondering if that was going to be part of this budget process, coming up with at least the where we are, so that we can then be able to analyze that to see what we got to do going forward. So, for example, if we're all evenly spread out over 20 years then it's no big deal, we just replace X number. 
But if there's a big hump around 18 years old, then we've got a bigger problem because those would have to be replaced faster. Um, we're at the hump. Okay. Well, that's my, that was my fear. Yeah, so, but part of what we have been talking about um, internally is looking into hiring um, a couple temps to be able to have an actual meter replacement crew. Could, could we get that um, information about where we are with the meters and the life and kind of have that as part of this process? Is that possible? Because I like, I mean, that to me, the, the whole thing here is unfunded liabilities for us. This, this district has been in a hole for a while. And just making sure that we have the complete picture to be able to present to the community to address some of the things that Deb was talking about earlier, which is how do we get all this stuff done? And I think the more that we know about that, the better. Uh, and the last one is the deferred maintenance. So I know we've talked over the last year or so about having a maintenance schedule, understanding what's deferred, how much really is in arrears. To me, it's not um, sufficient to meet that longer term vision of being able to say, well, we do a couple every year. It's where are we on this with our tanks, with our pumps, with whatever else falls in the maintenance data, I guess is would also fall into that. Is that part of this budget process as well? I mean, that's all stuff that staff is like. So when we're going and we're building out, so the all of the property <coughs> expenditures just came in. So now the first week in March is our internal meeting on all the capital projects, and so that's where we're building out the number of meters that we're looking to do in the next year. So I mean, all of that starts to kind of fall into place with that process. It, it's not so much the number we're going to do; it's the picture the, yeah, of so where we are. That is for the meters and for the deferred maintenance. <coughs> This community does not have a clear picture of what kind of financial situation we're in right now with respect to um, our capital infrastructure uh, replacements that, that's needed. We have that process underway uh, with the master plan. But these other two, it's, it's, to me, it's this big black box. And I don't know if it's a few hundred thousand or if it's millions. My sense is it's probably millions of dollars, but I don't have any data upon which to base that. We need to get that out in front of the public as quickly as possible. And I'd like to see um, us as a board say, we want, by the end of this budget cycle, to have a clear picture on where we are with deferred maintenance, what is our unfunded liability there, where we are with meters, what is our unfunded liability there, to add to what we've already done with the reserves, which is really good, what we're doing with the pensions, which should be good, and what Darren's working on with the master plan. When all that's done, we're going to be able to go to the community and say, you know, what we need to do is spend about $100 million or whatever it is over the course of the next X number of years to be able to address all of these. And the priority around some of these deferred things that we haven't really been really clear about. Um, I'd really like to see us do that this year. We've been talking about it for, you know, over a year now, and, and I don't feel like we're closing on that yet. So a couple of them are low-hanging fruits. So the meters. The meters were just about there. Yeah, meter, meters, that's an easy analysis. Tanks relatively as, you know, being able to say how many tanks are up for coatings and when, you know, that's a relative. The deferred maintenance is, 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 a, is a lift. Most of that work will be done by the director of operations. And we've been talking about it, and it's <laughs> been working on it, started with the tank coatings. Um, and uh, that's a lift. But we put a, in that completely, we put it in size down. Yeah, because, you know, from my view, you know, every year we ask our customers to pay more for the water. But I am uncomfortable doing that until we can present to them what a clear picture is of our financial situation. Um, for example, I really don't want to see the rate increase go into effect this year. Um, and I don't want to see rates go into effect until we have that picture, we plan out what it's going to be, and then we go to the community and say, this is what you're getting for the money that you're spending for the increases that we're talking about. And again, I think it goes to what we had members of the audience talking about. 
we need to be much more strategic about this than this, just doing this one year at a time, one year at a time. And I don't believe we've made sufficient progress in that um, in these two areas over the last year. Now, correct me if some of this is going to be coming from the master plan. Some of it will. But the uh, individual, you know, like the operations and maintenance, maintenance will be coming from. You know, what you're getting from the, the master plan is on the capital that you'll get from the director of operations is more on the L and F. The right. deferred maintenance ends up falling into both of those buckets. Yeah. Well, but, uh, but yeah, tank so. coatings, I think, are much more in the O and M side than the capital side. Replacing tank would be in the capital side well, if we don't. Coatings is also capital. Yeah, it's well, actually the tank. I, I, I get that. I get that it, we treat it that way. But from the point of view of um, what we need to be doing, it's not this 50-year life. My understanding on tank coatings, that, and then you replace the pipe. That you can extend the life of things by doing maintenance on it. And the two strategies we have for that are either start putting away a sinking fund, and if we're going to do two tanks a year forever, then that's a half million bucks. Or we figure out where we are with these things. My concern is there's so many tanks that are probably in this deferred maintenance category that it's the same thing with the meters. We've got this huge hump. It's not this nice level thing that we can just sort of fund every year. That's what we need to communicate to our community. And so far, in those areas, the meter and the deferred maintenance on the tanks, pumps, what have you, we aren't there yet. And we need to get there this year. Meters will be an easy, I mean, the meters we are looking at doing a yeah, more full-blown meter replacement plan. program. So when we do the in. whole, these, these things usually have either a full page or they're usually half a page on the capital things. We could sit there and, and roll out and show how much is getting done this year and how much the estimated is for each of the future years. So that one, that one, I think what you're envisioning will definitely have as far as the meters go. What, what we need to start with is where are we now? Correct. What is our right. current situation? We've been okay. reviewing so that in the last on the couple of weeks. On the meters and the deferred maintenance. We have both of us. Right now we have meters and we're working, we'll be working on deferred maintenance. Okay, so at the very least, I would encourage this board to say, by the end of this budget cycle, we need to at least have where we are now on those last two major multi-million dollar unfunded liabilities. If I could, usually uh, there's a you usually hire a consultant to do a comprehensive facilities plan that, that goes in, takes a look at your pumps, takes a look at your tanks and all those sort of things, determines the useful life um, and all that sort of stuff. I mean, that's usually done by consultant. I'm not saying how to get it done, Okay. right? That would be up to staff to decide the best way, given workloads and expertise and all that. I'm saying we as a board should say we want this done by the end of this or whatever time period would be reasonable to get a consultant on board if that's how staff wants we'll, to go. We'll discuss it, but just real quick, Darren, wouldn't you do that after the master plan where we have it all cataloged? Well, the facilities plan and the master plan definitely overlap. Right. Um, we can, we'll talk. But the tank, code, the tank coding, tank coding is, is the number one thing that's still this big yeah. question mark that's potentially multi-million dollar. And the director of operations has to handle all that. And, and I, that, that we can get to. Yeah, so we're, we're, two, we've been working yeah, tank for the last six months. Yeah, those two things. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So by the end of this budget year, can we say we will have at least an understanding of where we are with meters, and at least tank coatings. Yes. That, yes, that I would say would yes. be reasonable. I just don't want to create a double lift with the master plan happening and staff running and doing essentially the same thing when, you know, there's these consultants that are going to be putting together aspects of something, which I believe that's end of 2020 is when that's going to be done. But it, so, it wasn't my understanding that tank coatings were part of the master plan. Right, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Meters and tank coatings, yes. Some of the other aspects, those will come a little bit further down from this specific budget. It might be worthwhile to get a roadmap uh, on that. Maybe bring something to the budget and finance committee of where we're at, where we're planning to be. That would be the best case. I mean, uh, we can at least get information to, to know how we're going to get through the process. Because at the end of the day, we have to sell the community. Uh, I, I, right. well, yeah, and staff, uh, we've been talking as, as recently as today on it. Is that strongly agree that this information is needed all the way around? It's just the staff time getting it. 
and we just have to figure out how to do that. Any other board members with questions? Salute. Yeah. Does it have any how does your budget plan compared to how we've done it in the past? Very similar. <clears throat> yeah, I mean the timeline and everything like that for when we're doing it. Um, we are trying to get the committees and the board involved a little bit earlier on um, than in the past. So I mean, I think that's I think that's good. That's kind of the intention is like. If you have the strategic plan and all of those goals, I mean, it's a little bit easier to formulate everything from the start to have everyone kind of on the same expectation page. Last year and this year, it's a little, you know, we do have that rub to where we have the strategic plan and the master plan on the horizon. So that's where I think it's good that we have, you know, this discussion earlier on for if there's any key things that the board really wants to see in this budget. Um, that staff is hearing it earlier on in the process, so we have time to actually, you know, spend time and develop it out properly. And we do have our ex goals. Right, and then having ex goals now approved right. helps the process. Yeah, so ide like, ideally, you know, perfect flow of everything. <coughs> you have the strategic plan, you have your five year forecast, the district manager's getting his goals and objectives from the board for that year. That's tying into what he's communicating to us for the budget process and what he's expecting for us to be working on and building out. So, you know, I mean, we're getting close. I think next year we're going to be in much better shape for kind of all of those boxes being checked. Okay. Any uh, public questions or comments? Yes. You in the back. Hi. I'm Bruce Holloway from uh, Boulder Creek. Um, just trying to understand a little bit of the <coughs> discussion here. Um, I'm trying to understand, was Director Fultz saying, okay, so just by the way, I, as I recall, there's a uh, rate increase that's going to go into effect on October 1st. I don't remember how much it is, and I don't remember how many more years there are, or if this is the last year. Two at least, five, five, okay. five percent. Five percent this year, and then five percent the following year. Yeah. Okay. In November, I think. So, so that's already been approved, and essentially can just happen automatically. But I guess what I was hearing Director Fultz say is that when it gets to be the fall, he's not going to feel good telling the community, here's your next rate increase, unless um, this unfunded liability for the meters and tank coatings is, is quantified, essentially. It's all unfunded liabilities quantified. Um, okay, but, so I mean, like earlier, I saw a slide that had the CalPERS unfunded liability was three point eight million, and then there was one point one million on the OPEB. So that's about five million bucks for those two things. And I, I'm just going to hypothetically say, suppose that the meters uh, were going to cost around one point one million. And suppose that the tank coatings were going to cost around 3.8 million, the same numbers. Um, so, so you know, in the next several years. And so, if you if you had that magnitude of um, unfunded liability that staff actually was able to substantiate and quantify, then in the face of that, you might be willing to say, yeah, I think that rate increase is necessary on October 1st. I'm kind of asking yeah. you because you're leading so, this. Yeah, question. so I mean, I think what that does is allow you to have a conversation about what the next 10 years to 15 years is going to look like. And right now, we cannot have that conversation. Now, this is sort of input into um, a process that I think cum uh, culminates with what Darren's working on, the master plan on the, on the capital. And uh, all of that put together is what goes back out to the community for here's what we're going to be spending over X number of years and by God this is what we have to do and this is the finances that it's going to take in order to do that. Um, right now I, I, I can't have that conversation. We don't have that data. So we're, we're providing rate increases but we don't, yeah, we're not sure where we're going. It's a very uncomfortable place to be for me. Any other, uh, oh sorry, Darren, did you have yeah. a comment? Nothing. Any other public comment? Okay. There's 
no action as a result of this, right? This is just no, it's just informational. Yeah, right. I believe the staff's looking for any action. Okay. Item 11C. Yes, uh, uh, item 11C is discussion and possible action related to the bid received for the construction of the Wampipa tanks. Um, we're going to break this up and I'm going to ask the uh, district engineer to do the first part of, of the staff report and then myself and uh, the finance manager will take it. <coughs> okay, so it's the recommendation of the board that the board of directors direct the district manager to enter into a contract for the Lampico Tanks project with Anderson Pacific in the amount $2,212,250. And discuss supplementing the Lompico Assessment District in the amount of $975,734 from revenue certificates, participation projects, or other revenue sources. On December 15th, 2019, the San Jose Valley Water District advertised a notice inviting bids for the construction of the Lompico Tanks Project at 3 p.m. on January 6th, 2020. Two bids were received. The following firms submitted bids. Anderson Pacific in the amount of $2.212250 and RSH Construction in the amount of $2,989,500. District st staff referred the bids to the design engineer, Andrew Sturbins from the firm Schaaf & Wheeler for evaluation. One area of concern is the price difference between the design engineer's project estimate and a low bid. The task for your review is his report, including a discussion of the engineer's estimate in relation to the bids. In summary, no irregularities were found in the Anderson Pacific bid. The following is an accounting of the different project costs associated with the construction of the Pico Tanks project. Number one is a construction contract, Anderson Pacific, in the amount of $2.212 million. Number two is the construction management. We have a proposal from MME in the amount of $255,358. And there is environmental monitoring. We have a proposal from Joey McGraw in the amount of $73,802. Total for all that is $2,541,410. Yeah, I'd like to give uh, the board a little background um, as we go into this. On, on May 4, 2016, the Lompico property owners voted approval of a 10-year assessment district that was AD 2016-1 to generate $2.75 million in revenue to repair, replace, and upgrade infrastructure in Lompico and to consolidate with the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. On June 1, 2016, the consolidation of the Wapico County Water District was finalized and the San Lorenzo Valley Water District took over ownership and operations of the Water District. The San Lorenzo Valley Water District, working with a group of Wapico Water Board of Director, Water Board of Directors and property owners, facilitated a list of capital projects that the district required for a successful transition. The $2.75 million project list consisted of Replacement of all water storage tanks, which were the Lewis, Caskey, and the Drone. Uh, repair and uh, upgrade to the Mill Creek Surface Water Treatment Plant, which was removed from the project list due, due to uh, the district not using that water source. Uh, replacement of all water meters and service lines. Uh, water meters have been replaced and service lines are being replaced uh, as needed on a case-by-case -case basis. Replacement of uh, all SCADA controls that's been completed. An upgrade of the transmission water main to the Lampico booster. It's the San Lorenzo Valley uh, side of the booster. Uh, and that is scheduled to would be completed uh, in the summer of 2022. And replacement of all pressure regulating, regulating stations, PRV valves, and that has been completed. Uh, when the list of the projects were developed, the district was looking to operate the system as standalone under a separate water supply permit. As time went on, circumstances changed, and it was determined that the district could consolidate Lompico into the district and operate as a pressure zone, substantially reducing operational costs and eliminating the need to re uh, repair and upgrade the Mill Creek surface water treatment plant. Currently today, Lompico is under the, under the San Lorenzo Valley Water District, uh, State of California operational permit, 
we are one district. Uh, to move forward with the construction of the Lampico project, there is currently a projected uh, shortfall in the assessment district of $975,443. In your agenda packet, there is a, uh, uh, in this memo, a list of the current expenditures and which shows where the, where the shortfall, shortfall is. Um, in, a, in a memo uh, to the district board on uh, April 28, 2019, regarding the, the revenue uh, certificates of participation pro uh, projects, re resolution number 6, 19-20, provided for a loan funding source for the tank projects totaling $2.7 million. It's attached in your agenda. The district needs to decide if other sources of revenue in the assessor district funds are to be used. Staff is recommending moving forward uh, with awarding the bid for the tank replacement project using additional revenue to cover the assessment district shortfall. Uh, if desired, the board can award the construction project and discuss the shortfall at a later date, reviewing funding options at the Budget and Finance Committee could be one recommendation. Uh, speculating on why construction bids are coming in in, in so much higher than the engineer's estimates, Contractors voice strong concerns regarding site accessibility, steep mountainous roads, for reasons for higher bids. The tank projects are not gold plated. Uh, bolted steel tanks are considered uh, less expensive and are considered the next step up from a redwood tank. The district currently uses redwood tanks in other locations of the district. There are no excessive bills or whistles that staff believes in this tank project. Um, this project meets uh, design criteria and water quality standards. Staff has reviewed the, the projects for cost reduction. The only option would be to reduce the number of tanks, reducing fire flow storage, and probably most likely increasing costs uh, uh, to the district. This option is not recommended. The existing redwood tanks are leaking and presenting maintenance and water quality issues. The late award of the construction bid will only accelerate these issues. Uh, looking at the additional potential revenue sources, for the district in the process of moving forward with surplus and unusable land in Lompico, uh, this has a possibility of bringing in an estimated $350,000, which could be used to offset some of these construction costs. Uh, staff is recommending that the board award bid and, and move forward. With that, uh, we have the finance manager here, obviously, and she's done a considerable amount of work uh, from the start of the assessment district uh, and can answer most of your financial questions. So the projects that we have in the Lompico Assessment District are the tanks, the PRVs, the meters, and did we commit to replace the service line? That's correct. So that is an absolute commitment. Absolute commitment. Yeah. Yeah. And so as part of the assessment district and also the distribution system <coughs> up to the left people who's <coughs> so that would be the inner time. That's the inner time. Okay. All right. So right now we are a million dollars over. We have to do finish the service lines and correct. the inner time. That's correct. But the meters have all been done. The meters have been changed. So we're like so what is the estimate on, uh, this is something maybe to talk about in budget committee, but it sounds to me like we are probably half of, that the assessments district will deliver about half of the funds given where this came in at. Pretty cool ballpark, but we can get a better number. So we have an actual number of service lines that staff has replaced, mm -hmm. and the need to replace those is anticipated to slow down because of the PRV stations that were put in, we lowered the pressure substantially in some of the areas. But it's a commitment. But there is a to commitment replace to replace all service lines. Um, and uh, there is a commitment to do uh, the upgrade to the, uh, the intercom. Yeah. I mean, again, this just points out how unbelievable it is uh, to have delayed anything on these projects. We are paying the penalty for that in a very massive way. You guys shouldn't have to pay anymore. This isn't your issue. But um, at a district level, this is a serious issue for how we deal with policy around projects like this. PRBs are going to like that. PRBs are also. PRBs are 100% complete. That was also. 
Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I was involved in all these talks with SLT. And what we were told was <clears throat> SLV has plenty of redwood tanks themselves. They didn't want any more. And there was no getting away from you're getting all steel bolted tanks and replace all of those redwood tanks. And I, I tried to argue a little bit about that and said, hey, some of those redwood tanks are, you know, they aren't 50 years old yet or whatever. I don't know that maybe they go 40 years. Um, uh, but I was soundly put in my place. And I, Jim Raposo said to me, what, you think SLV's going to cheat you? I said, of course not. He said, well, why are you, you know, wanting to talk about this and do all this? And I said, gee, I thought that's what I was supposed to do. I'm sorry, I've never done this before. Um, but SLV has been really good to Long Pico, very good to us, loaned us money. We always pay them back. Um, the state gave us a 100% loan for the intertie, or grant, not a loan. And SLV did all the work. Rick Rogers ran that project. When he was done, he gave me a big stack of bills that I had to take to community bridges, and I had to sign and sign and sign. I swear, I don't know how many bills there were. And that went to the state. They uh, paid Long Pico, and I, I, the minute we got the check, we deposited it at the county and wrote SLV a check. SLV's been really good to Long Pico. Um, the other thing, though, money that wasn't mentioned here that comes from Long Pico, it's not just the assessment money, but there's property tax money um, that, okay, Cal Am was a private company, so when SLV took on Felton, uh, there was no property tax. Um, Scotts Valley, uh, Manana Woods, uh, any of the smaller little mutuals that weren't special districts. So since December 2016, SLV has been getting tax money from Long Pico, and this it's now up to 90,000 a year. And unless there's this huge downplay in, in the in, in the cost of housing, like there was in 2008, that 90000 ought to go up every year. So, as far as for me to look at it, I think Wampico is paying its way, best way we can, uh, considering what all took place. And I, I support this. And I'm able to talk about it and vote on it, mainly because it, I don't get any special effect from this that any Long Pekin wouldn't get. It, it doesn't, you know, doesn't affect me anyway. It's kind of like when I was on Long Pico board, there was this huge break on Lake Boulevard. I live on Lake Boulevard. They wanted to say I couldn't vote on it, and, and um, it, that was not true, for the very reason I just told you, because I wouldn't be affected in any major way than anybody else in Long Pico. So I hope you'll look at this and <clears throat> realize that people in Long Pico voted for this in good faith. And I believe that SLV, in good faith, came up with what they wanted 
And we all agreed, it went to the public, it went to not just the, the public in Long Pico, <clears throat> but also SLV uh, customers. There was a public meeting. So it's all been out there in the open, and I hope you'll over this, Franklin. Thank you. Any other comments, questions from the board? Second. <coughs> no, you have a second. Go, go right ahead. If nobody else has any questions. Yeah, so um, is there a way that we can vote for this and have the discussion about funding it separately in the budget committee? Is that possible? Sure. Uh, and I'll, I can ask Gina to step in too. But uh, it, it, we are fully funded. You know, when people came on as pay as you go. Yeah. Um, so we took out a loan, Stephanie, uh, we have a uh, this <coughs> participation loan. So we are covered. All three of those projects are listed in the resolution that this board adopted yes. with ample funds to cover the full construction cost of those three projects. So you have time to dis discuss how maybe we can uh, cover the, the extra, the shortfall. Um, and we can discuss the, the, you know, the, the, the two projects that are left over, add those two, maybe combine, and then talk. We have, we have time to do that. Am I correct, Jana? But. Yes. Um, if you, if the district can move forward with funding these projects out of the proceeds of the COP um, without deciding the ultimate source of, um, uh, of the funds that are going to cover the cost of these projects. So, um, well, so don't get me wrong, I'm fully in favor of getting this done. I've been a huge supporter of this right from the beginning, uh, getting done as quickly as possible. I am just frustrated beyond belief that we are um, looking at almost a doubling of um, construction costs. I mean, even if I take into account that I think the scope went from three tanks to six. Correct. So I, there, there's, That's a, correct. There, there's been an increase in scope, so I can't. I can't blame it all on the fact that it's gone up 4x. I would go from 700 to, let's say, 1.4 million, and we're at 2.2. But still. For the um, three tanks original plan, the engineer's estimate was less than 700,000. Yeah, it was 683, right, yeah. I, I think, to what it was. And so I, so if you doubled that to say, okay, we're going to do six tanks, just, you know, pick a million and a half just to make it round, we're st I'm still frustrated that this is going on so long. So yes, we need to pass this to get this project going, but I'd like to suggest that the board direct the budget committee to look at this in more detail because we have a hard commitment to Juan Pico and I do not want to wait 10 years to get everything done on well, It'll cost us more this. to do these exactly. projects we do not award bid tonight. Exactly. We need to award bid and but, the, but the same thing for the rest of the things that we have to do. Right. That the longer we wait, the more it's going to cost. And we have a commitment to the Long Pico people to get this done uh, as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So I, we, I, I'd like to separate the funding, uh, the longer term funding part if the rest of the board would go along with that from the awarding of the contract tonight to do the construction. But we're still talking about committing to that $975,000. No, not tonight. Well. Later. Well, well how, where we're so getting the money from. I, I want to I understand what the total cost is of to do all the commitments that we have done. I'm not sure it's nine seventy five. dollars I don't know that. Yet. That's just this project, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it will, it'll project. be an additional. And, and, and so, no to, to me, there there needs to be. There's another spreadsheet that comes out of this that says that's correct. Here's the rest of the things to do. Under what timeline are we going to get them done? And it's going to be more money than this 975. Yeah. I guarantee it. And it's definitely understood that the board had very little time to review this because we didn't realize until the bids closed of the cost of the tanks. And we couldn't bring this to you sure, six months ago. And, and so once we closed bid and found out that we exceeded the assessment district, then we, we combined this in. So That's why I want to take it to budget committee. Right. Well, we but I, I just want to be clear. So if we say we are going to um, direct the district manager to enter into a contract with Anderson Pacific, can we do that if we don't commit? Yeah, two point two, yeah. because yeah. we have the loan and the cash on hand. That's sufficient. Yeah. So, 
not knowing where that 935,000 is coming from doesn't stop us from worrying the contract. No. Okay, sorry. I mean, it, it makes me very uncomfortable. It's gotta be, I think it would be two stop. different motions tonight. I think it would be a motion for <coughs> bid, would yep. be your first, your first action, and your second action is you direct the finance to move this to the finance committee. Yeah, that'd be great. I think that's what I would recommend. Thank you. Not unless Gina recommends something different. Do we need a motion to move it? comments before we go to the public? <coughs> well, I'd just like to say that I support the staff position on this, and I support uh, Lois's position on this as well. So. Um, I'll refer to those two, the staff and Lois's, to support me. Okay. Uh, going to the public for comment. Anybody? Um, Tony? Tony Norton from Long Pico. Um, I just want to make one more, one more comment and a historical point that we, Long Pico, was directed by SLVWD to use the engineer that was used. That was someone that they indicated that it was someone that they believed in and that they trusted, and that is why we chose that person at SLB's recommendation. Okay, just want to make that point. Thank you. Uh, yeah, well, and sort of just practicalities. When um, the engineer did do the estimates on the tanks for Lompico back in 2015, um, I did my own research and looked at what other tanks were costing nearby areas. Same thing, replacing red wood tanks with metal tanks. And it was right in the ballpark. I needed to do that for my own reassurance that we were paying the right amount. The previous two district managers to Mr. Rogers both indicated they felt that the tanks were actually a little overpriced, that there was more than enough money. That's 2015 mentality. That was the market then. We were okay. And I think that the bids coming in are the markets for today. Um, what I noticed was that it was the demolition prices that have really gone up. There was an extra, extra 549,000 difference between the estimate and the actuals on the bids. I know in other areas, I'm not sure about Santa Cruz County, maybe during those, on demolition and removal of materials, there have been lots of legal changes about what you can do with removed materials and recycling. That absolutely does drive the cost off. I don't know if that is, is in this effect, but what we're looking at is they have to meet the regulations for today. For example, getting rid of dirt. Very, very expensive. Yes, it is. <laughs> More expensive every year. And it's a lot because the regulations have changed. So I looked at how much, for example, was paid recently on the swim tank. That was about 62,000 gallon, something yeah, like that. 62. And it looks to me like we're right in the ballpark if I just took the, the total figure of all the tanks divided by six. By the way, the six tanks, what we're talking about is 440,000 gallons. That's storage. Doesn't matter how many tanks. That's the goal. Right. So whether it's three or six, there's no right. extra tanks here. We're talking sure about, about that meeting. number? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think so. Uh, I don't know. Sure and I also know that check. we're overshooting it by about 20,000. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a smarter design, way smarter. Yeah. It, 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 it's up to the lost, There's yeah. pros and cons to, to going to single tanks and double tanks. So to, for my background and research on both the original estimate and on the present estimate is both market prices right in the ballpark are where they should be. The only conditions that have changed in Lompico is time. The access to the tanks is exactly the same. Everything about it is the same. The, the same time, tank, the tanks themselves, the cost is actually a little less than what the estimate was, the physical tanks. So that kind of stuff really hasn't changed. The only thing that changed is that we're looking at a 2015 estimate intended to be done in 2016 that had built in some kind of estimates where if it was taken a couple more years, there was that built into it, not waiting for five years. <laughs> And you cannot anticipate, and I, and I like your idea of getting an idea of what the bigger picture is, but how are you going to get a bigger picture when things like this happen when estimates come in way beyond what's expected? You can make guesses as to what the inner type completion is going to cost, but we really won't know until we go out to bid on that. Because again, it's going to be the market, what the market is doing at the time. How busy is everybody? Where are they? 
what's the weather like, what's the economy like. So there's going to be a lot of variables. But I hope you would go ahead and approve this. It's a very practical decision. These aren't Lompico tanks, these are SLV tanks. They're really leaking. You're losing a lot of water. You're paying to get that water out of the ground and treat it and remove it, and then it's going right out again. This is an economic decision. It has nothing to do with where they're located in Lompico at this point. We've been a part of the district for several years. I had to, I caught Rick Rogers even saying that, our system, your system, and I said, no, <laughs> That's, that doesn't exist anymore. All right. We're friends about it. Um, but this is a good SLV decision to go ahead. It's not going to get any cheaper. It's only going to cost you more. Thanks. Thank you. Bruce, you had a comment? Thanks. Um, well, Deb mentioned the swim tank. I haven't been around much lately, but it seems to me it was the same story there, where there was an engineer's estimate and it was less than half of what the what the only bid. You only got one bid on that, I guess. Anyway, um, so the previous item, I guess, I was throwing out these unfunded liability numbers for, you know, I was just making up numbers for the tank coatings and the meter replacement. And so now you have two more items, unfunded liabilities, which are service lines and an inter a bigger inner time than what's already there, I guess. Um, well, anyway, I, I, I came in late, so I didn't, I didn't hear what happened to the fish ladder uh, item. Struck. Okay. But I guess my memory of the, the whole fish ladder issue is that uh, Cal Am had promised uh, Fish and Game, California Department of Fish and Game, before it became Fish and Wildlife so a long time ago. Cal Am had promised to fix the fish ladder, and when this district bought the Felton system, uh, we bought a pig and a poke. Uh, we just took on that liability that was pretty much known, uh, and it looks like that's a million dollar item too. So um, I don't see that the Lompicans are unique. Um, and. Uh, well, anyway, okay, so I guess what I'm wondering is, is there some land in Felton that you can sell to pay for the fish ladder? Or is there some land in, uh, in uh, Ben Lomond or Boulder Creek that the district could sell? Good. Thank you, Bruce. Okay. Any other uh, questions, comments? No. I, I, could I say something again? Okay. Thank you. So we did have six tanks in Long Pico. Um, and you really need what is it, redundancy. You you need six tanks, not just three tanks. It's I don't think it would work very well. What happens when one goes offline? And so four of the tanks were on the east side of Long Pico. Uh, they were all 60,000 gallon tanks. And then the two 100,000 gallon tanks were on the west side. Because the best people are on the east side. Let's <laughs> 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 oh, <great. laughs> start a Jerry Springer show. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, I, I'm just really happy, because this is so important to me. I, I worked on this so hard. So did Rick. So did James. This is hard to realize that it's such a big gap. And I appreciate hearing all this support. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Anything else? Can we get a motion? I move that we direct the district manager to enter into a contract with the Lompico Tanks Project with Anderson Pacific for the amount of $2,212,250, period. I'll second. Let Lois second. She should have made Okay. Second. Ollie, would you like to record the vote? Director Ferris? Aye. Director Foles? Yes. 
President Swan? Yes. Director Henry? Yes. Director Moran? Yes. Excellent decision. Yeah. Excellent decision. Uh, Gina, do we need a motion to send this um, other topic to committee? I don't know that we do, do we? You don't need a motion. You could make one if you want to do it more it, formally. It, no, it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, if the board just says it's okay for it to go to the committee, we'll, yeah. we'll take it up to committee. I might have yes. I agree. Okay. So, so do we need we need to make motions on the <coughs> Jody McGraw? Uh, it, you have item item. next item. Yeah, you have additional items that we'll get to in a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was great decision. Thank you. Yes. Thank Let's you. go build some tanks. Very much. Right. That is all. Item 11D. Uh, uh, item 11D is discussion possible action related to the construction management consulting services for the Lumpipa tank project. The engineering manager will deliver this item. Is the recommendation that the board of directors find MNE civil and structural engineers to be the top ranked firm and direct the district manager to enter into a contract for the construction management of the Lumpipa tanks project to MME civil and structural engineers in the amount of $255,348. On December 15th, 2019, San Luis Valley Fire District advertised a request for proposals for construction management consulting services for the Lompico Tanks project. At 3 p.m. on January 23rd, uh, 2020, one proposal was received. The following terms submitted proposal and then the district staff carefully reviewed the proposal and determined that the proposal from the MME meets the minimum requirements set forth in the RFP. The RFP required the prime consultant to hire sub-consultants for prevailing wage monitoring, geotechnical engineering, asphalt testing, and concrete testing. MME submitted a pro proposal which included the lowest fee, a clear understanding of the project issues, and adequate staff time to provide the required inspections and project oversight. Copy of the proposal is attached. It's right in that 10 to 15 percent of the contract. <laughs> is that Misty Miller? Yes. yes. And Dear, this is a year long project? Yes. Thank you. There's a schedule attached. Two MME did our uh, construction management services for uh, just recently completed uh, probation tank and did bang up job. They were a good firm and they were a local firm out of Santa Cruz. Okay. Um, Bob? I hate to see that we only got one response though. So are, are we, is this sort of a going to be an ongoing well, theme. I mean, I, I get that they did a great job and all that, but, not, you know, Well, in Long Pico, I mean, it's so difficult to get to these tank sites. Yeah. So if you had a firm from anywhere other than local, it just, you know, and we're requiring them to be up there daily. So the oh, travel okay. time, oh, it just that. becomes so, so much part of the contract okay. that anybody in a local firm is, is just not practical. And is it, are they the only local firm in the area? Well, that yeah, that, that I've spoken to who's interested in the project. I did have another firm that I was talking to that's doing some work down in Monterey. Um, yeah. But it, 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 the commute time was just too much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. It was, it was definitely presented to multiple yeah, I know firms. Yeah. No doubt. And Darren worked diligently trying to get bids out of multiple do you, firms. Do you feel like you're turning into a BD guy here, Darren? You're selling? Oh, yeah. Business development here, we're selling the thing, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. What's? Um, Misty Miller, or however you say it. Misty Miller. Um, MME. Hmm? MME. They changed their name, actually. They did. It's okay. Funny. But they've been to Long Pico. They worked on the Lake Boulevard issue. Um, yeah. They they did some engineering for us. They're a great firm, and I'm just happy that they'll come to Long Pico. Dave is Ozzy. 
Rodney Cahill. Rodney's Ozzy. Yeah. Ozzy. There we go. Any other questions from the board? No. Uh, public comment? None? Okay. Can you give us a motion? Anybody? Ms. Pico? Well, it's funny you do all these Long Pico motions. Come on. <laughs> it's not written out. <laughs> okay, so I, I might flub it up. Well. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we authorize the district manager uh, to find MME civil and structural engineers uh, to do what they do. Does anybody want to make a the tank project? Enter into a project, tank project, civil engineers in the amount of $255,348. And direct the district manager to enter into a contract. And I, I did say that at the beginning, I thought. Direct the <laughs> district manager. Who knows what I said. And I don't have a voice tonight. So, does anybody want to say that over again? Gina? Are you there? I'm here. Um, so all you need is a motion to uh, direct the district manager to award the contract and execute and delegate uh, execution of the contract uh, document to him. Okay. That's a motion, Holly. Thank you. I'll second, second that. Go ahead, Holly, and take the vote. Director Ferris? Aye. He said aye. He tried to. Uh, Falls? I mean, Director Falls? Yes. President Swan? Yes. <coughs> Director Henry? Uh, yes. <coughs> Director Moran? Yes. Okay, moving right along to right. Item, item 11E. Uh, 11E as discussion possible action related to the environmental monitoring and reporting consulting services uh, for the Lampico tank projects. Uh, the engineering manager will give this report. It is the recommendation that the board of directors review this memo and direct the district manager to enter into a contract with Jody McGraw Consulting for biological services for the Lampico tank project in the amount of $73,801. Uh, on December 15, 2019, San Luis Valley Water District advertised notice inviting bids for the construction of the Long Peak of Tanks. Uh, at 3 p.m. on February 6, 2020, the bids were opened and located with Anderson Pacific in the amount of $2,212,250. As part of the biological resource mitigation measures identified in the ISMND, for the Lompico Tanks Replacement Project, a qualified biologist must complete the tasks outlined in the following documents. The biological Resources section of the project initial study mitigated negative, negative deck DDA 2019B. The Emergency Endangered Species Act Consulting for the San Lorenzo Valley Water District Lewis Tank Site, DDA 2019A and the initial project schedule which shows the drone tank being constructed concurrently with the Lewis tank, SLV 2020. For full sco scope, see Exhibit A below. The following is an accounting of the different project costs associated with construction of the Lompico tank project. Again, this is just reiterating the total cost. Uh, cons a, consultant, a construction contract from Anderson Pacific, $2,212,250. Construction management, MME, in the amount of $255,358. Environment, environmental monitoring by Jody McGraw, in the amount of $73,801. The uh, proposal from Jody McGraw is attached. I'll answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Derek. Anybody have any questions? Question. Um, we have used Jody McGraw in the past, have we not? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
I was a little confused, sorry. Um, did this go to bid and Jody was the only one that responded or because it, it says that yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly how that how that worked. So the tanks went to bid. I do not believe I, I'm not sure of the history on this particular proposal that we got from Jody McGraw, other than I think Jody's been instrumental in assisting the district with some of the emergency permits that we've had to obtain related to the uh, Lewis tank. Understand. So she's been involved with the project up to this point. It, is there a reason we didn't go to bid on this? We went to she, bid on the other two? The reason being that she moved in uh, at the district's request back into the initial review to um, to take the emergency to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife and got an emergency, emergency permit right away and moved in and put together a list of recommendations of what to do as part of the construction. She's been involved from day one putting together the, the complete project. I, 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 I get all and, that. And, that's, but, and then she just continued on with that. But, but this is a significant... She, she had not, we did not bid at this point. We would have had to do some creative bid proposals or bid writing because um, she was already engaged. Well, I, I get that, but as part of that engagement, was there like an implied promise or something that she would get the rest of the business? Not an implied promise, no. I, it was it's just the way it, 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 um, it we went into the, the construction phase and she was working with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and then developed what would be done as part of the construction phase. But she's also writing, which is part of this, uh, our take or our, uh, our multi-project uh, take permit that covers all of our projects. No, I, I, and that, I, I, kind of I get all that. I'm, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a there's no promise that was, she would get this or... Was I'm a comfortable this not business. part Gotcha. This wasn't a part of when we entered the contract with her for the emergency service for the right. tank. Well, I thought that's, that's why. That's why I was asking. Did that, we? Did well, we yeah, promise that, that. Was that like ninety-eight thousand dollars at that time? That that was. Well, ninety-eight thousand was what I do believe that we we're putting uh, as part of uh, the, the endowment for uh, future restoration. Oh, I thought that was part. And of, that's what I she, that's and, what and she worked on that. Building. That was all part of, of her initial with U.S. Fish and Wildlife. So it, it just went, it just continued. There was no original contract. I, I think, I mean, again, my personal opinion is on these things we really need no, to start. I, I understand that. We need to start bidding every aspect. If it's significant, look, if it's ten or $15,000, yeah, but I mean, this is a significant portion of the overall project as well, and I'd like to see us start, um, start bidding these as well. We're going to have a number of these projects coming down the line mm -hmm. where we're going to be doing a significant amount of environmental work around them. I think right. it's important that we we bid all of the all aspects of all of those. Not, and not and just I, I know you've voiced that before and we are we have done a significant much more bidding than we have done in the past. We've got a, a lot better at, at bidding projects. Um, not that consulting firm we used to use before. No, 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 I, I mean, as you good. see, she left a long, that yeah. firm left a long time ago. But I think but that's, I think that's good, that's good yeah. direction we need and to finish. We have, have a, a district engineer and, and, and bids and pretty much she was left out of the loop on, on the environmental aspects on this project. Um, and it just went, we started and we got the emergency permit and then she developed uh, all of the uh, mitigation procedures and so forth. Um, it would have been tough to bid, but not impossible. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, Holly. I was going to say, isn't it usually the case that this is a subcontractor for the, um, no. the uh, it's not usually a subcontractor? For, for the, uh, the, the, we, for we the keep, uh, we keep, environmental has always been a contractor. Because we need them to report to the district. They need to be independent. Right, they need to report to the district or to the contractor. That's correct. So that was my first question. And, was, and that was an issue in the beginning that they were going to, uh, that the design had it in. We had, we had some, some, some issues going into it. Can, can we commit um, going forward? We'll do uh, bids on the yes. environmental? Well, yes. What would be the impact if we didn't approve this and we asked 
to get bids on it. It's no. not a trivial event, like the, Bob says. No, I, I, I agree. Delay. We would have some delays. Right. But it, from the environmental standpoint, I mean, that's not, they're not building anything, are they? Like, they're just going to be No, they're monitoring. monitoring. Right. But and, when the when just start right away. I mean, I would I would rather come back to. I mean, I think this I think this person is important on this project because she led the emergency permit through U.S. Fish and Wildlife. As long as and the mitigation measures that she's going to do, that she's worked with U.S. Fish and Wildlife, I it's this continuity there. As as long as we commit that we're going to do going forward, I can. Go ahead with this, but I want we'll to see us do that. To either bring it to the board and requesting before we enter into a contract, <laughs> I want to bid. just be just because there may be something we can't bid, and I'll bring it to the we'll bring it to the board and ask for a waiver of formal bidding before we enter into a contract. We'll get board approval. In I don't want to. I just want to open and commit to in, in similar to something projects like, that. like this. Are we? Can we take a look at the, the estimate that she's provided, and are we comfortable that that's consistent with what she would have charged on, or has charged on other projects of a similar nature? Oh, I am. I'm comfortable with it, but that that's not going to... Probation was raised in the yes. park and is in the same Sandhills habitat. This, this is the same discussion we had around, what's what were, what was her name again? Um, the former people from down. I mean, it's the same thing. Well, I just kind of, they're a lot different. I, mean, I, I, I get that, but from, from the point of view of process, we are going down the same path. We need to start bidding these things. Okay. Dave? Um, I don't see any word in the proposal uh, any reference to whether or not Carly is involved in this. Is she aware of this? Does she approve? Yes. The use of Jody McGraw. Yes. I think that's an important factor that would yes. lead me to want to go ahead and proceed with this. Okay. Yes, she's very supportive of this. Lois. Well, Jody McGraw has been working at the Lewis, where the Lewis <coughs> tanks were, for actually quite a long time. It would seem kind of well, crazy right. to put out a bid to get somebody else that would have to be brought up to speed on all the stuff she's already done at the Lewis tanks, to me. She was involved in the Lewis tank before the consolidation to make the terminations of it was right. Sanders. I, I mean, we've been using, I look at the bill pay, there's Jody McGraw. Jody <coughs> McGraw, we use her a lot. Well, and of, of course, Carly does know her. It's just business, guys. I, I agree. There's it, nothing personal. It's just yeah. business no. that when no. you use somebody but for a I'm not time. done. I'm just saying she's worked on Lewis. Why would we get somebody else? And and she's she knows knows it. It just I I, I don't see it as an issue. It's a Maybe same. in the future it's an issue. It's but a, I don't think it's an issue it's on the this. Same thing that, that Brian Lee, former district manager, would say about using NWC. Guys, we don't want to do these same kinds of things. Doesn't matter who it is, it's just business. These things need to be bid. <clears throat> so you'd prefer to get somebody to come in who has no background on Lewis and have them uh, I you have, know, redo it. I have, I, have, I, have, I have no idea what someone might or might not do. That's up to them in responding yeah. to the proposal. But I can tell you <clears throat> that this looks like a closed shop right now relative to this kind of work. And I don't know that we can't get the same work, the same quality work, done at a lower cost. I don't know, because at this point in time, we haven't tried. That's all. It's just business. Whenever you have somebody that's been working a really long time, you need to go back out and bid. This is the public's money. And 73 grand is worth bidding and getting a second estimate, I think. You know, I mean, it's, it's just it's business. Yeah, but it's a little light. Well, now well, we're, not, we're not talking about getting a bid now. No. Now it is, okay. yes. But okay. this is why we're having the conversation so we don't do this again, hopefully. Or well, if we do, have it's a problem a lot of, with that. Yeah, but if we do, it's uh, with a lot of lead time so we can have that conversation. This might even be something that needs to go to the Environmental Committee if this is something that we need to talk about at a policy level. Most definitely. I have a point yeah. on it. So, um, in regard to Lewis Tank, so, <clears throat> um, 
It says, prior to initiation of ground disturbing activities associated with the project, the district will contribute $94,900 uh, to the endowment that it will use to manage and monitor the 6.7 acre conservation area. Has that money been budgeted? That was approved by the board and budgeted from on the last time on the emergency contract with McGraw. Okay. <clears throat> so there was a budget. That money goes with the Olympia endowment too. Exactly. Back to the district. Right. So, right. I just want to make sure that. Right. I'm not sure that money's been transferred yet. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. Any other board discussion on this item? I think Bob's got a good point. Anytime we entertain spending significant dollars of the water district's money, we have to ask the question you know, are we getting uh, a fair price? And the best way to answer that is. Multiple bids. Right. I, I totally agree. It takes Bob a whole month to make that much money. <laughs> <laughs> a whole month? Yeah, right. <laughs> you must be confusing me with somebody else. <laughs> uh, that's that's many months of work. Any, any other board comment? Public comment? Bruce? Uh, Ex-President Randall Brown used to say, when there's only one alternative, I start looking for other alternatives. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. Yes? I, I'm a consultant in the area who sometimes competes with Jody McGraw, and I, I wouldn't work for the rates that she's proposing to charge you. I think you're getting about 70 or 75 percent of um, rates you know, that I would charge. So. Um, it looks like a pretty good deal to me. It also looks like a very carefully worded and budgeted, you know, proposal. So I'm not, I think you're getting a really good deal. And I also know her really well. She was one of my students at UC Santa Cruz. She's um, very confident. She's regarded as one of the top people in the, in the area. Great. Thanks for your feedback. Debbie? I'm not sure if this has anything to do with the Lompico tanks, but in November of 2018, Jody McGraw was awarded a rather substantial contract, maybe Chuck, you remember, a couple hundred thousand, for doing a whole range of environmental work based on the proposed loan projects. So I don't know. If any of this was already included in that, or where that went, if that's yeah, even... I think that's the issue. Yeah, that's the issue, and that's a 30-year uh, district-wide. Yeah, yeah. district -wide it's a year to year project. plan is what that is. Yeah. So that has yeah. nothing to do with... Nothing to do with the Olympia. It would be nice if the HCP was done, because then we wouldn't have to worry about going through this now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... So there is a habitat conservation plan it's required, still but it's, it's, it's still in the works. But that's right. going to be in addition to the couple that's hundred correct. thousand dollar contract. And uh, the already. next environmental committee meeting, she will no, be no, there no. to give you all that, that, that contract, contract. Be, including a schedule. You think you think it that is in the contract? No, it's it's that, that, yeah, that uh, HCP is that contract. Yeah. So maybe it is already paid for. <laughs> well, no. the Long Pico, it's not done, so we can't use it. Yeah. for the Long Pico project, or we couldn't use it for the probation project either. That, that's point may be that the work that she does may be used in both places. Yes. yes. So in if effect, done. And, and maybe that's why, you know, um, Larry's saying it's such a great deal, but uh, as a consultant, I also am familiar with, you know, how you want to leverage activities too. So I get that. I think that was what you're asking about. I just want to make sure we're all not duplicating stuff because it seems well, like sometimes things are forgotten that we've already it, approved. It may be possible. Once that's done, that'll move these things a lot quicker and a lot cheaper. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? You know, I'll make a motion that uh, we direct the district manager to enter into a contract with Jody McGraw Consulting for Biological Services <coughs> for the Long Pico Tank in the amount of $73,801. I'll second that. Thank you. Any other honors? <coughs> Director Ferris? Aye. Director Ferris said aye. 
Director Falls? Yes. President Swan? Yes. Director Henry? Yes. Director Moran? Yes. Go build tanks. Go build tanks. Okay. Moving along. Okay, uh, item 11F is a declaration of surplus 100,000 gallon uh, redwood tank ports and the director of operations will give you this report. It is recommended by, uh, that the board of directors adopt the task resolution declaring Felton Acres 100,000 gallon redwood tank boards as surplus. Establish a minimum bid of $200 and direct staff to dispose of said surplus by advertised sealed, sealed bid sale. The background of this is the district's existing Felton Acres 100,000 gallon redwood tank developed a large leak reaching its life expectancy requiring the tank to be removed from service. Due to safety concerns, staff disassembled the tank, stacking the tank boards on site for disposal. This tank is located low in the pressure zone, creating potential, potential water quality concerns for stagnant water. Once the district's master plan is completed, modeling will be done for the zone regarding storage. Staff is requesting the board to establish a minimum bid of $200 to cover surplus advertisement costs. The tank will no longer hold water, but has a salvage value. It is recommended that the Board of Directors adopt the attached resolution declaring subject as surplus, establish a minimum bid of $200, and direct staff to dispose of said surplus by advertised sale bid. And that is resolution number 18-1920. Have you sold wood before from uh, disassembled tanks? Yes. Yeah, and have we gotten money for that? All over the place. Sometimes yeah. yes, sometimes no. Um, sometimes you wind up hauling it away. Everybody wants it until it comes to pay for it. Right. Um, I assume this time most likely we may get some bids because the tank hasn't been dismantled. Um, a lot of them we've sold uh, that were all you know still standing. Lampico was successfully sold uh, one of their tanks uh, yeah. and received, uh, I think, several thousand dollars yeah. for uh, a large tank. You know, the wood, yeah. I, I would estimate 50% of the wood is probably in good shape. You know, when they get done, there's usually a lot of rot, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of bugs, worms, sow bugs that are you know, But there's a market for this kind of stuff. Yeah. But there is yeah. A, yeah. the good thing about it right now is that we have it disassembled and stacked as yeah. to where if we when we get bids to have contractors come in and take down tanks and take them, they will either charge very little, but they're still getting that salvage value on the tank, or they'll charge, charge you nothing and take the salvage value on the tank. That's where we have it down, so we should get money back. How many square feet do we have? Roughly, um, board, roughly board I feet? think, huh? Board feet? Yeah, roughly, I do believe we have like 1,800 board feet or something. It might be. It's yeah, right. And the roof you've already disposed of. The yeah, the roof's so disposed of. All the yeah, yeah, bands are gone. They were just deteriorating garbage. There, <laughs> there's no salvage value in the bands a anyway. Like a board foot. Do we uh, sell this as is? Yes. And if so, do we have any legal liability? I mean, if, if for um, whatever reason the, the the wood ended up being repurposed and and there was a problem with that. Could we be liable? No, I believe so. I'd assume we that sell it as is. I'd refer, yeah, I'd refer that to We had one person come back who complained because we listed it as in fair condition. So we made sure that we list it as is. Yeah, if we list it as is, I don't believe there's any, yeah, we we any issues. We, I can check with counsel on that. Gina? Yes. Gina? Uh, you should, yes. Yes. There's, it's, there shouldn't be any issues if you list it as is. I don't know that I'd go so far as to say there couldn't be any liability. I'd have to look at it a little closer, but... And maybe on the bid form, we could put something on the bid form. I don't know, you know, wood as is, whatever. Any other comment? Oh, any public comment? Anybody want any wood? <laughs> no? Cheap. 
It looks good. If you go on the internet and take a look at what repurposed uh, redwood tank wood. It tells you we're about $8 a board foot. <laughs> Eight dollars a board foot. Yeah, it looks nice. Holly? I've already had a call. Somebody mm -hmm. had wind of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Right. And of course we'll report back to the board. Sounds okay. good. It'd be party living. Okay. Uh, <coughs> by dinner. A motion? Anybody? Anybody? I'll make, once? Uh, I'll make a um, Motion that we approve resolution number 18 19-20 uh, declaring Felton Acres type of uh, redwood tank boards as surplus and providing for sealed bid sale. Second. Lily? Director Ferris? Aye. Again, Director Ferris says aye. Director Foles? Yes. President Swan? Yes. Director <coughs> Green? Yes. Director Moran? Yes. Okay, uh, item 11G is a joint meeting between the San Lorenzo Valley Water District and Scotts Valley Water District uh, Board of Directors. <coughs> Um, it's recommended that the Board of Directors uh, consider scheduling a joint Board of Directors meeting. Uh, it will be a dinner meeting proposed uh, with Scotts Valley Water District and the San Lorenzo Valley Water District uh, Board of Directors. The San Lorenzo Valley Water District and Scotts Valley Water District have maintained a close working relationship for some time. The two districts have worked together and partnered on protecting water supplies and strengthening water system reliability. San Lorenzo Valley Water District district is closely working with Scotts Valley as member agencies of the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency, overseeing groundwater management activities of the Santa Margarita Basin area and working on sustainable management of groundwater supplies. Recently, Scotts Valley Water District uh, was the lead agency on the district's upgraded emergency interties between the two districts. Grant funding was uh, obtained from the project uh, through Scotts Valley and uh, Scotts Valley supplies reclaimed water to some existing district customers along Mount Hermon Road. In the past, in order to heighten the relationship, the two boards and district managers have attended a mostly, a mostly social joint dinner board meeting. At these meetings, there is discussions on topics the two boards may wish to agendize a regular board meeting at a future date. In the past, the district had traded meeting locations between the two districts. This meeting will be noticed as a board meeting and Brown Act requirements will be followed. Uh, the district manager has reached out to the general manager of Scotts Valley and received very favorable uh, response for a joint board meeting, dinner meeting. Staff is looking for approval from the board. Some possible meeting dates would be good to save Holly pulling her hair out. Doodle. <laughs> and doodle polls. I don't know, doodle on the point. Yes. And with that, I'll turn it back over to the board for questions. Okay. Who's the party planner? Bob? Luke? No, no that would be Doodles. Doodles? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't do the 11th. I, I haven't even started pull, pulling really. I just was given a date and uh, the very first person that responded said couldn't handle it, could not um, make that date. So um, well, I will, first I'd be the, happy to send out. Do, 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 do you guys want to have? A meeting with the Scotts Valley Board? I think we should. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a neighborly thing to do, and we do okay. work with the San Margarita Groundwater Agency, at least some of us, and um, more are, that are involved in that conversation the better. Okay. I, I recall uh, about a year ago there was a team proposal building. for some team building yeah. type thing. Mm -hmm. I think at that time we so we suggested it would be a good idea to maybe do a dinner instead or some other uh, more uh, <coughs> uh, informal type thing in the evening where potentially more people could make it since that was during the day. And I think this is a good thing. It sort of follows up on that. Louis, you for a meal? <coughs> Not only that, I, I, I agree with Lois and, and Rick and Bob that, that, that I think we're going to be working closer together, Wisconsin Valley particularly. As it relates to Spingua, but on other issues that, I mean, we've worked with it in the past successfully on several projects. You know, I, I don't know why we turned down that team building session when they offered last time, but 
think we need to start with some of these. Me and Rick went. Bad timing. I went. I think it was bad timing. It was in the middle of the day. It's and it, was, it was an all day event, too. It was a long yeah. one. It was. It was never bad timing for team and the food okay. was My CFO would have been a problem. There's a lot of high fiving, I'll tell you that one. <laughs> I do have a question. Okay, What's so. The menu? Well, so what for example. <laughs> no, since it isn't open. Whether we're going to have dinner or not with them. Since it is an open meeting um, and the, the public would be able to attend, the who's paying for the public's dinner? Well, yeah. in, in the past, the boards are the only ones that had dinner and the public sat in the sidelines. And just watched. <laughs> and just watched. <laughs> As I recall, it's been a long time since I've been to one. Uh, it's a long time since we had one. Um, I, I don't think very many people showed up, but there was always a handful. I'm sure. Um, but uh, I do believe that di each district covered, and I double check this, each district covered their board's dinner. Um, and anybody who attended as the public paid their own or decided they didn't have dinner. And that'll be clear. That can be clear, yeah. Well, um, just as a party goer here, mm -hmm. I would think it'd be uh, incumbent on the host to uh, provide some sort of snacking for uh, the people that came, the audience, to watch people sit and, uh, and eat food when not being able to have some food <laughs> is uh, poor form. So uh, if we should be able to do something to accommodate uh, yeah, I, some, I, I agree. some guests. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Refreshments and appetizers or something? Well, at least some, some you know, plates, soft drinks, drinks or appetizers, ice appetizers or something. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. something. Okay. Good. Rather than nothing. Uh, yeah. Okay. So do you need no to suggest a date or do we like Well, it sounds like Holly's going to set a, a doodle pool and maybe she can get with Perrette of Scotts Valley Water Manager and get their director's emails and send the whole group. And that would be special to try to get uh, all of us together at once. Um, who would be included? Would that include managers? It was the, it was the, the district manager and board members. The board can say General whoever Council? they want. Sorry. I would recommend general counsel, but I don't believe that, uh, I'm not sure if Gina wants to attend or not. And I think it would uh, probably be expensive to I, attend. I would, yeah. no offense, Gina, I, I would suggest not. No, <laughs> I, I wouldn't be inclined to attend, but I appreciate the suggestion. Even though it is a board meeting? Would it need to be recorded? Well, those are all good questions to ask now. I want to know. I mean, hmm? You know, obviously, I think Gina has concerns with Brown Act issues and to make sure the agenda is properly posted. So it probably need to be recorded. In the past, it wasn't. They just took no, they took notes. But there's no requirement to record. I wouldn't recommend recording. Yeah, I, I think that would be hard. It's going to be background noise. Back, you yeah, won't be able to hear it. Plates it's clanking. Horrible. Yeah. Especially when Lois is into her third martini. <laughs> <laughs> she starts doing her, her feather dance from the 1950s. I would be under the table, you silly man. Three <laughs> martinis. Uh, okay. Uh, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know that we need a formal motion on that, do we? It's no, probably not. No, just say, as long as you tell me and we'll move ahead. Jan, do you have any words of wisdom or anything that you would like to say about it? Well, my. I think we're on top of getting it properly noticed, um, and I believe that the agenda item contains a general description of the business that is likely to be discussed, at, or that will be discussed at the meeting. We do need to capture that in the agenda, so it's worth taking a little bit of time to think about how um, the items of discussion are described. It just can't be anything. Right, gotcha. That's right. Well, we can talk about the weather and, you know, right. family yeah. and that sort of thing. Okay, then we'll move ahead on getting this set up. Public comment. Is it going to be yeah. formal? Yeah. Not after the third martini. <laughs> <laughs> the okay. Just one comment. I think 
Uh, <clears throat> timing is somewhat important here because number one, the SPIWA meetings are starting to make are starting to appear to make decisions about the GSP. So if, if we're going to be working closely with Scotts Valley on that, you know, more communication is, is better than less. Yeah. So I would like to see that done sooner than later. And we have the budgeting process and coming up. We have an election coming up. You know, I'd rather not it get drowned out by all that. If we act in the next couple months, I think we can get it out of the way before the other big hitters. Well, we were hoping March. I mean, not, well, uh, not to drag it on. Perfect. So I, I'm I'm not available the weekend of the ninth. And okay. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. But the second meeting in March. So um, he's kind of available the week of the ninth. So well, we don't want to have one of our meetings. It's the nineteenth. So basically, right. you yeah. could we could either do it the week we have meetings. I wouldn't suggest the first week. That is a that is a killer week for me, um, schedule wise. But the third week, but that's a meeting week, is the only other thing, right, for us. Uh, so can we go up on a Wednesday night? Well, yes. We don't know their availability. So any type, say the third or fourth week in March, just can't be as that's a target. Okay, yeah. just can't be too much. Okay, third or fourth week in March, we'll get something. Yeah, yeah. We'll see what their availability is. Yeah. Bruce, did you have a comment? Yes. Please. Um, I think this is an extremely negative trend, if you think you're going to be eating during a business meeting. Uh, John Leopold proposed this at a SMIGWA meeting, I think it was in September. Uh, he came up, it was the end of the month, I guess he had meetings all month, he was so tired, famished. And so the very first thing John Leopold said at the SMIGWA meeting was he wanted some dinner. He wanted Perep to provide it. And uh, then there ensued about 20 minutes of discussion about how hungry John was. So um, I just think this is a terribly negative trend. I've I've um, been to meetings that lasted all day. I've been to strategic planning meetings. Uh, the district secretary prior to the current one uh, bought sandwiches for people. Um, this district secretary has bought sandwiches for everyone when there was that kind of a meeting, a workshop meeting or something like that. Um, I don't expect to come to a public meeting and watch you eat. And I think, you know, frankly, I don't even know where you went to kindergarten. If you think that you can sit and have dinner at a public meeting and, and snacks for the for the others, I think that's terribly rude. And I don't even know where this emanates from. Does this come from Perret? Is Perret trying to suck up to all of her directors by feeding them dinner? This is ridiculous. Um, and there's so many restaurants in Scotts Valley and SLV. You know, if you want to adjourn a meeting, take a break, it's easy to do. You know, you could go down the street uh, in an hour and come back and have a meeting. Um, so I just think this is a terribly negative trend that you think you're going to sit around and eat dinner in front of people at business brown ad meetings. What a joke. Find something else to do. Hey, Bruce. Hey, Bruce. Any other comments? Nope. Okay. Holly, you got the action item. Okay. So wouldn't we go to a restaurant? No? Yes. Yeah, it, um, it's a plan. It's, it's semi Business semi social. A well, big thing of what he just said, you can't okay. adjourn and then all go to dinner together. So it doesn't work that way. It's a Brown Act violation. No, well, I mean. No, you're right. It's, if it's at a restaurant, I guess we'd have to feed whoever came, seems to me. Well, not, I'm just saying how it didn't happen in the past. Yeah. Oh, you can leave that with Rick, and he'll come back. Yeah, see what Brett has to say. I mean, I mean, the, the the past sessions have been you know semi social, semi business like. It was kind of get to know the different directors that you're working with and talk about possible items that you would like to 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 agendize and, and discuss mutual interest, which the two districts do have some items out there of mutual interest. I mean, that we've yeah, talked about yeah, exactly. several different things, especially with the Santa Margarita groundwater, especially with conjunctive use. I, I, I mean, uh, you know, I look at it as, as Santa Rosa Valley and Scotts Valley are, are the ones that are going to take care of this aquifer, and we need to work together. And, uh, you know, it's always better when you know the person. Like might be personally, I like to know who I'm working with and talking to, and have somewhat of a cordial relationship with. 
Yeah, that makes perfect sense. That's, yeah. that's just my two cents. How we organize it for the other people that show up, uh, we'll let Holly figure out. <laughs> well, I, like you, well I, I, was just wondering, <laughs> I was just wondering if, um, it, why the public has to be invited. It's a board, it's a board it's, meeting. It's a board, it's a board, board meeting. meeting. But what, what if it's not? What if it's a social meeting? You can't talk business. You can't oh. talk business. You can't talk business. You can't talk any. We can, we can talk weather, family, yeah. uh, sports. And the weather maybe. Pictures and catchers. <laughs> yeah, the weather <laughs> might be a good topic right now since we're not going to start talking about drugs. You're going to get yourself in trouble. So, but if, the, if people aren't invited to this event, why would they expect to be fed if they're just showing up there? I, 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 well, it's, 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 I it's being noticed as a meeting for the two joint boards, and if somebody shows up, why would they expect to be fed? I don't understand. I, I, I'd have a problem eating in front of them, frankly. Exactly. I would. I eat in front of people at restaurants all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there's lots of people around. They're, uh, they're welcome to get to Now, now so, you're being we'll get, silly. We'll, we'll get some dates yeah. and no, get back no. to you. We can, we can move on that list. There's some, is there more public comment? No, I don't think we need any more comment on this. Let's go to the consent agenda. Anybody want anything pulled? <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing no. full? Okay, great. <laughs> One question. Um, I can't find it, but I believe there were no water quality Again, complaints. Again, two months in a row. Congratulations. I got one this month already, though. Uh, it's still <laughs> it's surface water. Has it, has it happened before? Well, it's surface water. Surface water. Yeah, but it hasn't. Do we typically not oh, yeah. have complaints? No, not typically not have, yeah, it's, it's happened before. It's two, not, month, two months in a row? Two months in a row, I don't know about that. No, no. you can be honest. Congratulations. Say, congratulations to me. We got one this month already in County. Yeah. <laughs> county? Yeah, Here let's not go there. Bad no, it's not on the agenda. It's not in my packet. We'll talk about it next month. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion to accept the minutes from February 6th, 2020. We don't, we don't really need to do that. We don't need to, okay. It's done. Yeah. District reports. You have the department heads here in front of you. You have the reports that are here to answer any questions that you may have. Or is any of the department heads would like to point out any points of interest that you think the board would like? Well, I do want to point out that I did try to do a little bit better on my report, putting priorities up there and didn't really put anything about the little stuff. And the little stuff is approximately the 15 leaks in the system. All the other stuff I felt like needed to be talked about so, and brought to attention. What, what's our surface water, well water uh, split? <coughs> The surface water, well water was 87 percent, 13 percent. Yep, 87 to 12.86. Oh. Um, so, and that is actually, we used a little bit more well water in January this year than we did in 2013. So, I mean, we haven't had much surface water to take. Any of that contributed to flushing? No. Okay. So flushing didn't start until February, so you'll see an increase in well water in February due to flushing. Gotcha. But other than that, no, that's just contributing to the lack, lack of rainfall. Rain. Okay. Yeah, and that is that comparison's on there on the bottom of that page right there. So you can see 2013 was 88.08 surface water to 11.92 well water, and then you got this year was 87.14 to 12.86. They're close numbers, but <coughs> just <coughs> noted. If this continues, we'll see a, a, a significant increase in electrical costs this year for pumping. Yes. You know, you'll see a shift. When there's no rainfall, you'll see an increase in operational costs. I wish we could get rid of that high pressure that's just been driving everything north. Jesus. It's going to rain in spring. Yeah. Let's hope so. Your spittoon, James? <coughs> no, that was definitely a spittoon. Water bottle. <laughs> Do you have any other questions for any of the heads? No. Anything no. the heads want to say? 
I've said it all before. Okay. Darren's going to be busy. Well, I, get, I will say, I mean, you guys all know about Bear Creek Road, I take it, by yeah. now. So, I've tried to buy it a lot. So, yeah, just be aware that that's coming down the pike, and that's one of the big ones on our list right now between Darren and I and Rick. So, there will be a replacement and to be determined who pays for it. You gotta quit breaking those pipes. I know. Darren, you're gonna be busy, man. Yes, he is. <clears throat> but good. Yeah, yeah. good one. You'll be moving us to Lone Peak, though. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't the road, isn't the road open? Or is it? it is. We've yeah, got so two lanes. We've got two lanes, so you don't have to wait anymore for all that traffic to come out of there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> There's a lot of traffic that comes out. No, of there. I, I mean, don't, don't joke know. about that one. I, I know. I'm not Everybody kidding. has three cars each. Okay. Guess we're done. Yeah. Is there anything else, Jim? Any committee reports anybody wants to share? Oh, yes. No. I don't think so. Well, uh, Rick may want to share oh, today's Rick. committee report on the environmental. Uh, sure. Um, we had a uh, SOQ, is that what it's called? Or right. Or a, uh, SOQ, Statement uh, of Qualification. Statement of Qualification, yeah. correct. Uh, for a fire management plan, and uh, Panorama was the people that came down. Uh, a woman by the name of Tanya, I don't know her last name, but uh, came and gave a half an hour presentation about what she can possibly do. and. Uh, where the staff is going to work up a recommendation about how we proceed here. We'll probably be still work on in the environmental committee about what's going on here, but we're making steps to get a fire management plan in the works. Right? Larry was part of that meeting today, and uh, it took up most of the meeting. And the consultant the panorama has a lot of <coughs> what I would consider somewhat local experience. Yeah, uh, they work on Midtag, there, um, right. other water districts. Um, <coughs> and truly, under seem to understand the area, exactly. and working with sta other stakeholders and the importance of working together. Um, I think they're a, a firm that can just about do anything that we would need for the district. Very yes. comprehensive. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'll tell you whatever questions you have about it, Lou. I know you weren't able to attend, and you've been a big part of pushing this uh, plan management plan forward for Larry <coughs> and Rick. So uh, it was a productive meeting. How about that? Very productive. Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And you want to add anything to that, Larry? Or, you know, just do it. Yeah, I think the consulting <coughs> firm is very impressive. Um, uh, I think clearly they uh, knew how to approach this. Most of their approach seemed to reflect what might be done in the future and also what would be done with the cooperation of all the other agencies in our region. So it took us a while, I think, to get to the point where we were realizing this. a lot of this planning would, would not be only for the water district, it would be for, um, you know, a collection of agencies cooperating. And so, um, anyway, I, I was very pleased with it. I, th I think that you made a really good choice. She seemed to have a very good understanding of what grants are out there and the importance that we're yeah. going to need grants uh, for our, our plan to move forward. That we have a small budget and grants are going to be an important part of this um, program. There is today. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else from anybody? Then I guess we can be adjourned. The meeting. 8 to 48 p.m.